Okay, we have an ambitious stream today. Yesterday I finished some basic pathfinding. Well, it's not pathfinding. Today's gonna be pathfinding. Yesterday was some basic follow AI for our partner here. Um, right now, basically, the partner will go directly towards you if there is line of sight. Um, otherwise, if you get lost behind stuff, and there's an obstacle, it'll use these, uh, these red dots as like breadcrumbs that your player drops and follow those. Um, which, are, which works really well for most cases. But now we're getting into the more edge cases, so um, it's easy to get your partner stuck behind stuff. Like that, so... I've detected it now. Um, if the partner doesn't move for a set period of time, I think it's 0.7 seconds right now, um, we're going to trigger some actual pathfinding. Which is what we're going to do today, which is kind of... It's going to be a little more tricky, but um, more things to keep in mind. So that'll be mostly what we do today. Um, hopefully it goes smoothly. You never know though. basic outline of my plan today. First thing we do would be fairly easy. It's just, um, so with the pathfinding I'm gonna use the grid there's not grid based movement in the game but there'll be a Pretty close approximation for where paths are and stuff like that. Um, I need to test which is quicker on different collision testing methods just to keep things optimized. So that's what I'm going to do first. Like the most basic, like the most straightforward method to test whether. So say you're the partner AI to test whether tile to your left or right or up or down is blocked or not. Um, you would draw a circle cast as like a like a simulation of you moving the character there. But I think it's going to be. I predict that it's going to be better optimization to just do like a, a rectangle from like where you are to like a single thing. So I'm just going to test some of that out. Um, we're going to ignore the code I've got right now. Use our AI as a testing here. So what we need Marker time, we're just gonna do a test. Um, and then the most straightforward would be the circle cast, which I've already used here occasionally. Do it a thousand times, I don't know what number to use for the test. Gonna circle cast from to the right. Twenty. That mask. Stored as a variable. Print out how 
long that took. It's in second. So it's going to do that every frame, so I'll just bunch up. I'm lagging it all, so I need more. It's like super cheap. It's pretty awesome. Is this a million? Okay, well. I was honestly expecting it to be more expensive than that, so that's cool. Now there's lag. I mean, it's not gonna matter, because it's doing a million in 0.75 seconds. 0.8 seconds. Um, I'm trying to think realistically. Like even if I did a hundred, it's like nothing, right? Not even gonna compare other stuff, because this is gonna be the most accurate. One ten thousandth of a second to do a hundred. So we're good. All right. Circle cast it is it is not expensive for the amount of casts I will be doing. Um, I will still have a backup of spreading out the logic over multiple frames. But it looks like it's probably going to continue to um, solve the pathfinding in one frame. Anyway. But it won't hurt to spread it over multiple ones. That'll just prevent lag. Okay, circle cast it is. Let me look at my notes here. So now we get to kind of like the actual pathfinding algorithm. Um, I'm going to expand outward from the partner, from the ally, until we find a spot with direct line of sight to the player. And that's what we're going to walk for. Um, grab the first tile with line of sight, it might not necessarily be like, the most optimized, but I don't think it'll be too bad. Like, you can weight your pathfinding toward your target, but I don't think we're really gonna have to do that. This is already like a fallback case for when the AI gets stuck behind objects. So, let's get to it then. Uh, this is gonna be a little tough. Um, done it before in other games, so hopefully it'll go smooth. This is where we check and decide that we're stuck. So here we're going to swap around our goal here. Basically here we've decided, okay, our, our follow directly to the player and our breadcrumb method is not working. We're stuck, we need to do something else. Don't 
that. Back to the normal AI. Here. Now we're going to do this pathfinding algorithm. So for that, uh, we're going to need a list I could use a, like a reference. different anyway, I don't want to have to translate stuff. I do want a new... since it'll be over several frames. So we'll need to keep a list. So we're gonna expand out from the partner. And we'll keep a list on of the border tiles. Also, do we also need lists? Let's see, how am I going to do the path? Positions 
coordinates. As well as its parent tile, which is towel. Weird. Check to see which tile character's on, but if the character's on just like a tiny corner of it or an edge, it might not technically be walkable. We want to check that first. I think we're gonna say, we're gonna imagine the character's already, I hope this will work, I think it should. We're gonna imagine the character's already in the middle of the tile. And then with the first surrounding border tiles check, we're actually, we will actually go to the grid. But this first one is just based on the character position.
Hmm, I need to, um... Normally the coordinate for the tile would be the center of the tile. This first one is... I guess it I guess it won't matter. Tile I'm going to do I need a, I need to keep track of the tiles that have been found. Add a list of check tiles. Clear that at the beginning. Well, add the same tile to check tiles. Every border tile we're going to go up, down, left, right. If that tile not, is not in check tiles, circle cast. create a new tile. It's gonna do a uh... check Y 
I check? the new tile. New pathfinding tile. Tile is the parent. Create it. Oh, this is where I wanted to, um, First tile, I need to do something different with. Mm. I think we're just gonna do in the start. Set the first tile exactly on the position. And then the surrounding tiles are going to be attached, attached to the grid. We're going to do all that here. That way we can keep all this clean. check to the center of the tile you're already on. It's gonna go around until we find an open tile.
make this more clear. The first tile is a fake one because it's not assigned to the grid. That check is the first one. Cyan dot on the fake tile start. Let's 
let's get rid of the spiders. in the corner. It's like, okay, this is the parent tile. That's good. Well, it's 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 good that she it's hard to get her stuck. I might have to like intentionally create some boxes. Okay, there we go, there's another example. Yeah, the center of the tile. That works good. I just want to test one. That to, I just want that to be like a little bit higher. Okay, we're good. So that will be the first start tile. position start I 
this position to the center tile position. Circle cast to the center of the tile. Oh, I standing on it. Hit collider. It's null. There's no. No collision. Yeah, okay, the first tile you walk to is this center tile. Walk to the center of the tile you're standing. It's the first and only border tile and else. Going to have to. What we're doing. to be able to keep that in one spot. Still need like a starting tile that's on the grid though for the, the main method to work. you're standing on is not center of it is not accessible surrounding tiles that are on the grid, so starting with do plus tile size to the right. All the other logic stays the same. I'm gonna also have to need logic 
for the edge of the mat too. I think I'm just gonna just straight up do some box colliders around the edge. This pathfinding code will work without any extra chain. Pretty elegant compared to other options. Alright, let's do that before I forget. Um, It's gonna be make it a thousand wide. Height is gonna be have a height variable. as big and extend past the corner. Otherwise, weird clip might happen. And then edge wall dot offset this new vector two. It's gonna be width times tile size plus half the size. left wall 
it's going to be the same dimensions and just minus half the size. Um, so it's going to be minus half the, the height. Hey there, Shadow Taco. Hope you're having a good day. Let's see these uh, walls. There we go. Perfect. Giant walls on each side of the map. Let's do top and bottom now. This is gonna be kind of flipped. Twice the width with a thousand height. Offset's gonna be half the width times the tile size and positive. Positive half the height, or the the height of the box, and then the bottom one, same size. The offset's gonna be half the width. It's gonna be minus the height of the map times tile size minus half the size of the box. Gigantic walls on the edge of the map now. That was that was a teleport tile. That's I forgot that was there. I can't walk off. It's fine. And with that being on the with that being an actual box, our pathfinding is going to work without doing any weird stuff to take edge of map cases into effect. Okay, cool. Don't need that. 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 that. Alright, back to the pathfinding. Not a path to the center of the tile the ally is standing on. And look around us for her. This is to the right, to the tile to the right that's grid based. Position to that tile. I'm gonna check the hit circle cast. This is a 
this is wrong here. This needs to be the tile we're going for. Circle cast to the tile, and we're gonna do the same thing here. It's gonna be a big, giant, nested, ugly thing. Tile the first tile. Otherwise, like if the pet if like the starting tile is to the right, but the actual quickest path is to the left, that'll be fixed. I have that planned. That's fine. It's looking for a valid starting tile. Find. Else, let's check the tile to the left. Same stuff. And if that's safe, then we use that one. Else, let's check the tile above us. So that's gonna be start fake tile. Absolute value of this. Y plus tile size. That one's fine, we add that. Otherwise, go below us. If that's fine, we're good. Otherwise, we're just immediately stuck in a very tight area, so we'll handle this. This will be our super fallback. Just basically teleport to the player. We are super stuck. I'm gonna put I do want to test this. So these dots should be up, down, left, right. I need to adjust these so it happens. I'll just undo all this. Exactly what? There we go, that's the top for one. Yeah, 
I think all that's good. Dots now. So we have the initial setup correct now. Make a 
Boolean. Tile is new. Say it's true. If we find out that it's not new, we'll say tile is new. It's false. Break, and then here we'll do if tile is actually new. Now we create a new tile. It's plus the offset. Parent to the current tile. Forgetting make this text a little bigger when I'm streaming. Um hmm. getting kinda hungry. So for of a small little thing. If we're stuck, I think I'm gonna later on have like a little animation where like a little question mark appears or something.
do the um, check first. Smaller than your actual actual hitbox. they'll be like awkward bugs possible if I like have weird collider sizes the pathfinding will find a path that's not actually there like the player's too fat reality like that really rare and then I'll back in This is where it's smaller. This is to cut off corn. Do you want that as two? The tile based stuff. A bigger radius. Okay.
we also need here? If we found a border tile to start at. We should do our line of sight check to see if that's actually all we need to get unstuck. change this. I thought about it earlier. It's just a separate variables we're going to give. Vector 2 position. So then, instead of, I'm just going to do tile.
So here we're gonna do the distance from distance from the tile position. Which is not from order tile zero that position. Circle from that position, radius and angle, distance from position to this. That mask. And if hit collider is null, that's all we needed to do. We weren't that stuck after. So then what we do, let's see, um, have to a separate thing here. Fill this in later. Path. Because in the end, what we're actually searching for is to find the closest tile with a direct line of sight to the player. Tile is new, we check to the right. It's safe. Then create the new tile. from the border tile we're testing to 
a new tile. That new tile is safe to walk to. Create it. Be more descriptive here. New tile. It's this parent border tile. And then we add it. Border tiles and check tiles. Um, hmm. I gotta do something different with the border tiles here. I need some lunch. Um, I'm still gonna stream though. I'm just gonna mute my mic while I eat. Because this is not a weird ASMR stream. I'm just gonna brainstorm what my next moves are here. Uh, I might type a little. But I'll be back in like three minutes after I make a sandwich. get moving. We have a good setup going. Okay, we're back. Let's see what I'm gonna do here. This is to the this is checking the tile to the right.
Maybe this is going to work.
Yeah. That is a valid path. Yeah. See, this is what I was talking about earlier. The quicker one would be here. But it's fine. Good enough. I think. I guess that box isn't... I think the path finding is working. Just need to make her follow it now.
Pathfinding works. It shows the dots of falling on the path, so we just need to make the character follow it. Um, so when we find the path, we follow this. We uh, call this follow path. It creates a, a list of path points, vector two. Set a following path boolean to be true. Path points, it's not a list, it's a stack. Pop the topmost out. As target path point. So now, our update method. We're following a path, we just gonna, we're just gonna walk. This to the target path point. Set the controls. We do if distance. Position and target path point is less than three. Just to throw a number out there. That's what we used earlier. Something else. Then we'll be like, okay, you're close enough. Go to the next point. Circle collider. It shouldn't get caught on it. Set for the crumbs. The crumbs are super close together. That's fine. We're gonna do. This is safer to do a smaller number. Then one pixel target path point. Then. Set target path point to path points. Dot pop again. I've never used a stack, but I'm pretty sure this is how you use it. Remove it. We need to check. See if that's the last one or not.
hat on. This is, we just, we just, uh, reached our target point, so we want to do the path points to count. Zero, it's empty. back partner First one work, the second one.
hoping it's just the second one as always. That would be easy to fix. Holy fucking. Okay, yeah, I need distance. That's at 530. Because of her collider, she's only getting 533. Code Red, thank you for the follow. Hope you're having a good day. We just about are done with our pathfinding here. There we go, there's the bug again. What's going on here? Stuck was called, but a path isn't being built. How's it going? Hopefully I can get you some working pathfinding here in a second. I wish I could open this up. There's a way to see what's going on. So stuck. Last time stuck printed. There wasn't a path printed. Things looking good, thank you. Big plans for this one. And I'm, happy, I'm happy with how it's going so far. The stuck printed. We're stuck, dude. Assume I need to do. Where's the yellow? The yellow's at follow path. Something's breaking between then the path finding. So let's just print some more stuff. Um, after we're stuck, let's print. What border tile we uh, decided on to start with. Then I want to print something during the pathfinding. Stuck. I'm going to print every new tile.
it's a valid new tile, we're gonna say. It's under this. Print new tile. Dot position. One more print, what is that? Testing plus offset. Print the border tile position. Here's, this should be a lot of information. Hopefully this will let me figure out on it. How long on this game? Uh, it's difficult to say. I'd say seriously, just kind of like, I don't know, six months or so. Off and on. Uh, more seriously in the last few months. But I'm reusing some bits of code from it. Still really early though. So that one works fine. So let's clear that. I need you to get actually stuck and break so I can figure out what's going on. Fine. Also fine. Add more boxes. I need more boxes. There was a stuck, okay. There's the problem. Found a border tile. Border tiles, border tile position. Right, left, up, down. And then I never printed this, but somehow, somehow from there, it doesn't make any sense. It's 
somehow from there test it up, down, left, right, and decided all those directions are blocked. Not. Four fifty-five thirty is the start position. But Collider is always returning something. It, that's what uh, uh, that comes. Kind of like luckily finding some paths now. Yeah, FF9 music is. I have a very random playlist of all kinds of mostly RPG. I like to listen to while I'm work, while I work. So this was just my hard coded to the right. I need to do an actual direction. Um, I think I'll just use the offset. It's just Still, this doesn't have to be normalized. Just do offset as a direction. That still should have. That still f feel like. Hmm. Still need to add something else for in case actually are stuck. It's like that would be somewhere down here. If we get new border tiles, we'll do if new border tiles count as zero. We'll do pathfinding failed. Test that in a second. That should. Hopefully. game of hide and seek. Kind of a weird path there to just go straight up instead of like that, but already a fallback anyway. I don't think I'm gonna worry about that. Take a bit of work, quite a bit of work to fix that anyway. As long as it works. So I want to do slightly I 
could do that. Hmm. Let's do that. When I call follow path, I'll actually just that'll be an easy way to fix that problem. Make the actual movement nicer. Call follow path. This is building the path points. gonna do position to on the player and then what we're going to do with the, the furthest tile we found with line of sight to the player instead of just walking to that tile and going straight toward the player let's add more points from the player to that tile and then up above in the in the movement logic we can uh, find some shortcuts but we just need to add more paths along that line of sight should be pretty good. Start on the player and then while vector 2 dot distance between the target position and the furthest tile dot position is greater than 20. to clear the path points at the very beginning of the method and we're going to add a path point push new vector 2 going to be target position let's see what kind of vector method is here Position target is the furthest tile that position. I'm gonna move 20 pixels towards furthest tile. Found that has a line of sight to the player. like move towards returns a vector. So I'll add that and then we'll say and then we'll say uh, target position is that thing we just added, that point we just so then I'll loop through this while loop until there's it's less than twenty away from the furthest. I'll just add a lot of points in a straight line. Hopefully. Let's see how that works. I shouldn't put that box there. I can't get through. Didn't work. Added more than here. Hmm. 
Gone from the wrong end. No, it's not. It might be working. I'm just dots. There we go. That's oh, all the way to the plate. Right okay, now, I need to update the pathfinding. So she actually walks directly to furthest away dot with line of sight. It's gonna be like, okay, it's here. Like, okay, I can see that one. I'm just gonna look ahead. Oh, I can also see that one. I can also get to there in a straight line. It's gonna skip this one. It'll make a big difference, like, here, or around here. It'll be like, oh, I can already see, like, this one way over here in a straight line. Skip all this weird stuff. And that, and that's where those new points I just added will come in handy. I did that up here. Ugh. Pathfinding can be pretty tricky. Uh, I did it already in Enchanted Cave 2, which was... Eh. I was gonna say more complex, but it probably just felt more complex because I had less experience then. This is probably more complex because it's not tile-based. Like, I'm using tiles as an approximation, but... I want to be able to skip tiles and just use angles and walk whatever direction I need to. But it just gets easier after you've done it before. So where is... That's where we get a new path. reached our target path point. At that point we are going to peek ahead to see if we can skip that one. So we want another loop. So let's do a forever loop. Um, let's 
see while true. It, we just want to peek at it. Take a peek. And then do our test. Copy it somewhere. Right. This stuff transformed our local position. direction from the angle. Um, I think I need to do that. It's like a, a different. I'm going to make a note and possibly optimize that. trigonometry when Direction and then uh, the distance is going to be the distance to that point. Vector 2 to distance from this local position to the look ahead point. Using that mask. And if here we're going to say if, okay, if hit. Collider is null, meaning we can get there. Once you set, we have successfully skipped our target path point. Now we do path points dot pop. We're no longer peeking. Pop it out of the stack and continue our loop. I believe. Else break. Um. So want if path points dot count is zero break. There's nothing else to, already on the last point in, in that case. Which I can actually I'll just make that cleaner. Path, while path points dot count is greater than zero. automatically break when it reaches zero. So then we're going to new path point, otherwise break. We do need the angle here. It's actual movement. So maybe the angle situation isn't as important because we need it anyway.
Alright, that box is annoying. Shortcut. Yeah. Cut off like this whole section here. Looks like that's working. Not much to cut off there. off but for there well that's because y'all already, already moved yeah that's the last thing I need to do I was standing there when the path was created but in the time she's catching up I'm also moving so I also want to add checks um, just do every frame uh, directly toward the player and if I had that in my notes too while the partner is following the path. Every frame check to see if you can just stop doing that and go directly. So if following the path, it's gonna do that straight up at the beginning. this to the follow target dot Position radius to what's in the angle distance is this to the follow target position using the mask. Probably happen every time. Like, okay, I can see the player now. Then it'll default back to here and it'll be going by the distance. Let's say path aborted followed target.
did I hit up? Is there a thing? That, oh, she hit. Change that. There's a teleport in the middle there. Uh, make a note of that. Partners can't trigger teleports. Big skip off the end there. And something was going on here. She got to the end of the path and she still could see me. Somewhere she, she went over here. Honestly, underestimated my uh, like initial like little red breadcrumb strategy because she's getting really far on that alone. She actually gets stuck. So why well, she didn't off this corner? something with that last this broke my shortcut code somehow I think
sure what happened before. It seems to be working okay though. It wasn't a big deal anyway, and it's kind of weird that she didn't take the shortcut when it was a bit. Yeah, yeah, there's a teleport. good. Really good. Not a wall there, so I should probably just... Move around the left side of the wall. So, yeah, so what I wanted to test... Final situation that we want to avoid is somehow the environment changing, like you pushing blocks around, enemies moving stuff, where there isn't a path anymore. AI is just stuck, so it's like the nuclear option to just basically teleport to where you're at, but I think I'm gonna do like just like a jumping animation. Very rarely even gonna happen, but you gotta have something like that. So like if I manually move her on top of here. And then let's see default. So here's our collision boxes. I crash. Pathfinding failed. Happening here. No new border tiles. Could fail there. Also at the very beginning, if there's just no nothing at all, like a tiny little there. So we're just gonna add
Should be fine. So instead of a single constant jump time, we're going to give the players current jump time. So I want it longer. Right now, that time's just for jumping off a cliff. If you're across the screen and like pathfinding's broken, longer. Off cliff takes a direction. Target and direction. Jump direction. Pretty much copy all this. There, and all the cliff jump's gonna do is take a direction. Target and it sets. I'm going to do the sprite stuff and then jump to target. This cliff is doing different, setting different jump targets based on the type of cliff. And then here we're going to do the jump to target with the jump target. So 
here we say, okay, we got our jump direction. Already have our target. We'll do the sprite stuff. Different sprite animations based on which direction we're jumping. Then we set that. The move delta is. This is just target. Blah blah blah. Set that to the time. Good. Jump target. Let's test out. I didn't break the cliff jumping. So that was some kind of reorganization there. Gonna go over here. Fine. Even have a partner following us. So the jumping still works. to the AI, ever jump to target method. I say ally, jump to target, follow target, transform that local position, direction is the ally, current facing direction. Jump time is going to be distance between this and follow target. Uh, the distance divided by, uh, see, the cliff jump was half a second for like. Two tiles or something. The distance is going to be like one second for every hundred. I think that is what I need. Um, so that's going to jump. I want to add a note in the AI. I think this isn't even called at all. Oh yeah, jumping update jump. It's in an else. We're good. It's jumping. It's not good. We do want to target. This is start pathfinding.
case that happens and know what's going on. Here, we've run out of border tiles to check. Let's say Pathfinder failed. Jump directly to the target. And here. jump, big slow jump. Are we good now? Yep. Let's see, was that just the jump was too slow or lag for some reason? Slow jump. So I need to speed that up by like twice as much. dark on me. I need, um, to... The jump speed's not gonna be linear.
just take a little bit longer. We'll do... We'll do like 500, the distance. But with a minimum of at least, at least do 0.5 seconds plus. It's still linear, but this is what I like a little bit longer for so let's see what the speed looks like if I go up here move you up here quick little jump good down here, go all the way over here, it's faster, and faster still. just a, like a linear tween overthinking this Weird looking, but fine. It should never happen that much. But now we can do, let's see, we, I do want to do something like this. 0.5, we want it to be a little bit longer. Bigger distances. Jesus Christ. My 
door buzzer is so loud. That's a decent speed. And further away. Is better. I go like this. Last ditch option. Cool. Okay. Uh that's really really good. I think we're pretty much notes we're pretty much good um, and the closest spot shortcuts over several frames there won't be any lag option is if right now the path finding it's like okay we found a path and that path is perfectly good forever so let's follow that path and then we're gonna be good but in reality the path could become bad if push a block in the way so it's like I'm gonna put the character here I'm gonna path find out but while it's path finding I'm gonna close it off and I want to add the, the stuck logic back to make sure if 
the character is not moving for a certain amount of time, it'll resort to... It'll try to find a new path, and then, then if it can't, it'll just jump. So this is another edge case. So, it should be broken now. outsmarted. Um, yeah, I don't want... Problem is that pushing check, I uh, want it for the cliffs. I want the AI to jump off cliffs. I want to push block. Whatever it is, jump off a cliff, that's fine. That is fine. Alright, let's try that again. So I'm gonna go over here, move you, over here. See, I need to add 
think I need to do this to get those breadcrumbs here. Then move up. Does that. Path locked. So here I want it to re trigger if it's following the path but it's stuck. Then do the jump. I'm gonna add a method to unite all those now that I'm gonna have three, especially. Push block example. Here we are following path. Otherwise, the other stuff has. Let's see, where is stuck? And stuck set to true. Stuck with following, not moving. Let's add a new Also gonna call that if we are following a path. I'm gonna do all that stuff. Check if stuck. Got 
stuck being called. Something. What's going on? It's kind of unclear from the printout. Ah, missed it. stuck. It's trying to pathfind, but the pathfinding failed because it's completely closed off. So we resorted to the jump. Intentionally block your allies now. And they can't push blocks either. Okay, uh, that's really good. Good following. Um, I'm just gonna see if this still works. Da -da 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 Follow target and not player. They're just gonna. That second ally does everything the first person does to me, but to the first ally. Except they're. All, it's a little different though, because it does do line of sight toward me. Does line of sight toward the follow target. But it seems to be working pretty well. Awesome. Well, that's it for today. Pathfinding part two was a success. I think we got everything that I could think of. How it could break, how it could mess up. We got, so I, I wrote a little outline. We have it going directly to the player. First of all, it's top priority. If you can't do that, it's gonna go to the most closest the most recent visible breadcrumb, these red dots. If you can't
can't do that. If you're not moving if you're stuck, you're gonna do the pathfinding, which is Still, if you are unable to find a path, then you just jump. Which disables the collision and basically teleports you where you need to go. And if you find a valid path but it becomes invalid and you get stuck, then you reset and jump if needed. So that's good. Everything's good. Um, yeah, that's it. I'm not going to stream Monday. That's why I'll stream today most. But, uh, yeah. Thanks for watching.